everybody's needing to figure out how to get rid of these bed bugs, so I'm gonna make a video for everybody real quick and show them how we got rid of them. About two years ago, um, one of our employees and one of our friends had their entire apartment complex infested. And unfortunately, that ended up getting to our house. And so that's how we figured out how they got in our house. Um, unfortunately, we didn't realize they were in our house until they'd already basically infested our living room, couches, and started getting into the bedrooms. Um, we tried baking them out, we tried cooking them out with the, you know, getting the house up over 130 degrees, and we held it for like 12 hours, thought we were good to go. Two days later, we found more in the couches. So obviously it didn't work. Um, it's too hard to get the heat into all the little spaces, the little boogers. So, um, and we've heard from several family members that have gotten them in their house that, you know, having to have the exterminators come out multiple times and spending thousands of dollars to try and get rid of them each time is a giant pain in the butt. So we came up with a way to, after watching a bunch of different videos and stuff of how the bed bug traps that they use to inspect for work and stuff like that, we came up for a way to try and get rid of them ourselves. Um, and thankfully it was awesome, it works great, and the only downside is your house kind of smells like, you know, baking bread for a while. So, so here's what we use. These are the things you're gonna need for every single trap that you wanna build, okay? Here. You're gonna need one small sandwich Ziploc bag. You're gonna need four napkins or a couple paper towels cut into four pieces. You're gonna need one bottle of water and you're gonna need one Tupperware dish. It can either be the sandwich style like this, it needs to be a couple inches deep, um, but it can be the sandwich style like this or you can get the little bit longer style ones. The longer ones work a little nicer because you can kind of tuck them underneath the edge of stuff. Uh, that's for each trap. You have to have this much stuff for each trap. Now, for making the traps, you're gonna need a roll of double-sided tape and you want double-sided because it's easier. You're gonna need a jar of active dry yeast. You're gonna need a spoon. You're gonna need a small piece of paper. You're gonna need a bottle of baby powder. Um, just make sure it's not the kind with the extra oils in it and stuff because it's not as light and fluffy. You're gonna need a bag of sugar and you're gonna need a glass of red diamond sweet tea. That way you can uh, remember that the world's not all bad. So. To start out with, let's go back and pan back. To start out with, we're going to start with our, with building our trap first. Okay, so we're going to do to build the trap. The way this trap works is um, bed bugs are drawn by two things: heat and carbon dioxide. They follow what you breathe out um, and your body heat. So to entice them into the trap, we're going to use yeast and sugar and water to create carbon dioxide and lure them into our trap. And then that's where they'll stay because once they get in the trap, they're gonna suffocate and die because they can't breathe in carbon dioxide without oxygen, without dying. So what we're gonna start with is a little Tupperware sandwich dish here. Okay, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put double-sided tape on all four sides around the edge. We're gonna take it right up to the very edge you don't really want it inside at all, you just want it on the outside edge. Okay? So they get stuck? No. It's not to stick them. This is to hold our napkins on the sides. Okay? Stick that on there. I'm gonna do this all the way around on all four sides. What we're building now for the trap is a way for them to get in the trap. Because they can crawl really well on blankets and stuff like that. But they can't swim. No, and they can't jump at all. But we have to give them a way to get in the trap. Yeah, they're fat so, little bucks. Now we're gonna take the napkins and we're gonna stick them on the outside. You want these right up to the edge right here. And the reason you want it to the edge is so, you, so they go all the way up and to the edge, searching for the, the carbon dioxide. I'm gonna layer them around it just like this. You want to, if the paper towels have a curl to them, you want to make it so that the curl is on the sides of it so that they lay flat on the bottom, on the ground. You don't want to leave any of the double-sided tape exposed at the top. Because they'll, they'll get trapped. No, they'll just get stuck right there. And then they may not try to come in the trap. So you want that paper towel to kind of roll over and cover the edge of that double-sided tape. 
Because if they got stuck there and died, that would be fine. But a lot of times they'll pull themselves off and they'll go away from it. Okay, so we got our little, these are our ramps for them to climb up. And it'll also let the, C the carbon dioxide flow off and then they'll follow that trail up and they'll get inside here. Next, we're gonna use the baby powder. And we're just gonna sprinkle the baby powder all over inside of this. You don't need a whole ton of it in there, just a little bit inside the dish. And you can smell it. Now, they can't climb on the dish very well because it's slick. And that's one thing you make sure that whatever Tupperware you use has a nice smooth inside. So what we do is we just kind of shake it around and make sure you get a fine dusting of that baby powder um, all the way around the outside. You can also use talcum powder for it too if you need to. But this makes everything super slippery for them. So when they try to climb in here later, as soon as they climb over the edge of the paper towels, they hit this and they slide in and then they can't climb back out. Okay, so this is the trap for them. But now we have to create a bait for them. So the way we're gonna do that is, in just a second, see what I do. I'm gonna take a water bottle. And I usually pour it out so it's about a little bit below the, the label on the water bottle. Okay, and then we need our yeast and our sugar. So yeast now we're gonna use the little bad. paper, little piece of paper here. I'm gonna create a tiny little funnel. This is the best way I figured out how to get them in the water bottles. So I usually do two full spoonfuls of yeast. Now, the more yeast and the more sugar you put in each one, the faster it'll react and the more carbon dioxide it creates. However, if you put too much yeast or too much sugar in there, it's gonna come out of the, um, it's gonna billow up and out of the, um, out of there and it's gonna basically try to make bread inside your bottle. So I put two full spoonfuls of, of yeast in there. Now I know to activate yeast, you're supposed to put it in warm water but you don't really need it to react that fast like you would if you're making bread or something. So doing it this way works just as well. It just takes a little bit longer for it to start reacting. So, and then I'm gonna give it probably at least two to three um, spoonfuls of sugar. I'm thinking how big of a spoonful you can get out of the bag here. We're gonna give it about two and a half, three spoonfuls of sugar in there with the yeast, okay? That's what the yeast is gonna eat and grow or release the carbon dioxide from. Then I'm gonna put the cap back on it. I'm gonna give it a little swish. Don't shake it super hard because you you can kill the yeast. So I just kind of swirl it around, get it mixed up nice. Once I got it all mixed in there, I got that nice gross looking stuff there. Make sure you don't forget to take the bottle off, or the bottle cap off. If you leave this bottle cap on, the bottle will explode. So don't forget to take that off. Now, to set the trap, this is now creating carbon dioxide that's gonna come out the top of that bottle. So I'm gonna set the bottle directly in, the, in here. I'm gonna take the little Ziploc sandwich baggie, and I'm gonna put this over the top of it. I'm gonna kinda put it straight down. I don't want it to touch the sides of the tub and you, the reason for that is you don't want any of them trying to climb onto the bag and, and avoid the trap itself. So the bag is gonna create a directional flow for that carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air or than oxygen, so it sinks in, in natural environments like your house. So as the carbon dioxide builds up in the bottle here from the yeast and the sugar, it's gonna flow out of the top of the bottle and it's gonna, tr it's gonna flow down the sides of the bottle and it's gonna flow into this Tupperware dish. It's gonna create a pool of carbon dioxide and that will slowly overfill this and it will slowly leak out the sides of it. Now, as it's leaked out the sides of it, the bed bugs will sense and smell the carbon dioxide and the, there's a little bit of warmth created by this as well. So they're gonna think there's something here to eat on and they're gonna travel right over here. They'll come right up the sides of these little napkins. They'll get right over the edge and when they get to the edge looking for it, coming, for, coming over here and finding it, they will drop right in here and then they're trapped and they're trapped in a pool of carbon dioxide that's gonna suffocate them because there's no oxygen left in there because the carbon dioxide will push it all out. And that's where they're gonna die. 
this has worked every time we've done this um, or when we did this we not only caught the big bed bugs we also caught all the tiny little bitty just nips. barely the size of um, little pinheads and stuff little white ones and stuff the little bitty nits and stuff yeah and uh, we also caught a lot of random little spiders and other little uh, pests. pests and stuff that were running around in the house um, one of the fun things too was gnats actually go into this too and stuff and they die in there as well because everything suffocates in the carbon dioxide now the important part about this though is you need to put this in a place that there's not a lot of airflow because if you get a gust of wind or a breeze it'll blow all the carbon dioxide right out of it and then your trap doesn't have any bait in anymore so you can't put it near a window or anything like that best place we found was either right up against the back edge of the corner of a couch um, kind of close to the wall tucked away and uh, up underneath the edges of the beds and stuff to draw them down there now the best part about or the best way to do it is to not use the room where you think there might be bed bugs and stuff so you're not giving them any other meal choices the best way is just to leave these traps in there now this trap will run and produce carbon dioxide for about a week is what we've seen that'll keep it'll because we we didn't you know activate it and everything like you normally would for cooking and stuff so it takes it longer to start producing and it produces longer the more sugar you put in the faster it'll react the faster it'll burn through the sugar or the more sugar and yeast you put in the more it'll burn through it the faster it'll burn through it and the trap won't be producing carbon dioxide as long so for us what we did was we used them for we set them up in every room we had at least one most of the rooms we had a couple of them in them just to give them plenty of options um around the couches and the and stuff the first the very next day 24 hours later um we had several in every trap and then it continued for about three days we were catching several in every trap and then um about the fourth, fifth day, we weren't seeing a whole lot of activity. So on the seventh day, a week later, I changed them out. I rinsed the bottles out, put new water in there, put more sugar and yeast in there, and put them back in. Um, right off the bat, 24 hours later, we had a couple new ones in there and stuff. So about a week is about how long it lasts. We did it for two weeks. We could, and by the end of two weeks, the third time I set them on the third week, we didn't find any in any of the traps. So we waited about two weeks because there's a hibernation period for the little eggs and stuff of a couple weeks. Or about a month on them so total so we were hoping that any of them you know we waited a couple more weeks and then we set the traps again for a couple weeks straight we caught a few tiny ones after that we waited about a month we set the traps again we've never caught another one in the house um you know in about every six months now because of that and because of how many people we hear about finding these bed bug traps all the time or finding bed bugs all the time now about every six months we do these traps we put one in every room and we inspect for it and we and we dig through and you know with a pencil or whatever and see if there's any babies in there or any bed bugs in there so far we've had no problems um like i said it, you'll, you'll catch some random gnats and little creepy crawler bugs and stuff that are running around in your house um in there but we haven't seen any more bed bugs um in my opinion it works really really well it's super cheap and uh like i said all you got to do to change it out is just rinse the bottle out and put in fresh water yeast and sugar in there and you can reset the trap as many times as you need to um, if you put too much yeast and sugar in here it will eventually flow bubbles up and they will get out outside of the bottle and you'll get a little bit of nasty down that'll run down the side of the bottle don't worry about it too much because it's still producing the carbon dioxide and all you have to do to clean it up is um, literally just you know if it's just in the bag and the bottle you can either throw the bag and the bottle away and start with a new one or you can rinse them out um, and with the Tupperware dishes like this and the double-sided tape you can just peel the double-sided tape off you can wash out the Tupperware dishes and everything and put new napkins and, and so, so forth and rebuild the trap um, this so far is the best way we figured out to get rid of them um, and it costs very little and it works really well um, we've had over probably over a half dozen or more friends and family now that have used this method and it's worked great for them even after the exterminators failed yeah. um, so the heating the house doesn't work as well as people think it would because it only heats the open air space of the house and your baseboards and inside the furniture and stuff is where these things live and those areas of the house don't ever get heated up to the point that it'll actually kill them because um, they have to be over 120 degrees to kill them and that just doesn't work very well so like i said if you know anybody needs to use this and stuff feel free to point them that direction and and like I said, it's worked great for us. I'm not saying it's perfect, and it does make your house smell a little bit like your bacon bread. Um, but it's a pretty small price to pay considering the, uh, the cost of an exterminator and them not working. The uh, only other thing you need to watch out is make sure there's not anything hanging in the bottom down there that they can climb on to try to escape. Okay, that's it. Hope you guys have good luck and you can get rid of all these little freaking turds. Later.